it's important to tell teenagers too how supported they are. You know, when I when I talk to teenagers when they're speaking, I would say if I'm up there speaking, people are kind of waiting to hear and sort of waiting for me to mess up. But for teenagers, they're rooting them on. I mean, they want them to be successful. And it's important to tell them that because they don't really know that. Um, that everybody is looking at teenagers and saying, this is this next generation, we're proud of them. We maybe would never have been able to do that at that age. Um, so I think it's important to put them out in front. Additionally, I think it does a lot for your ministry too. I always say that when, you know. When maybe I can try something that I'm a little bit frightened of because they see a young person do it and maybe not do it exactly perfect and realize it's okay and they're still invited to continue ministering. Right. So I think um, it, they can become very empowering to the larger community by being present. It's important to tell teenagers too how supported they are. You know, when I, when I talk to teenagers when they're speaking, I would say if I'm up there speaking, people are kind of waiting to hear and sort of waiting for me to mess up. But for teenagers, they're rooting them on. I mean, they want them to be successful. And it's important to tell them that because they don't really know that. Um, that everybody is looking at teenagers and saying, this is this next generation. We're proud of them. We maybe would never have been able to do that at that age. Um, so I think it's important to put them out in front. Additionally, I think it does a lot for your ministry, too. I was going to say, I think in general, we're pretty hard workers. Mm -hmm. And if we're committed to something, we're committed. Like, we won't bail out very easily. And this is something really important. Yeah. Um, another thing is, like, I know with, like, ministries, they want, like, a lot of youth to, like, help out. But, like, they don't really consider, like, youth being, like, leaders. And, like, we really, it's not just to get in National Honor Society or something. We really do want to be, like, leaders in the community. Because, like, I know I'm a senior, and I recognize the fact that I'm going to college, and I'm going to be on my own. And then I really need to like step it up and like be a leader in the community. So like I'm really looking for like opportunities that I can, you know, like show everybody that this is what I did and that I was in charge of this. I think that their honesty and their willingness to share themselves is something that adults we can really learn from. Mm -hmm. Good. In, in my world, working with children, we had two 15-year-olds last year lead the music program for Vacation Bible School. Mm -hmm and their, their uh, hard work, their enthusiasm, and just bubbly, um, th they were just so great that the kids, I think, think responded far better to teens leaving them than they did to the adults. Mm -hmm. They're excellent with kids. <coughs> they are, kids they are just unbelievable. Yeah, it's magical if you get them around younger children. Yeah, they're very, very good. Well, and, and I think if we can get them more involved, even as you said, at the mass level, you have a lot, as I had with my own, that are questioning their faith anyway, and that's such a growth period of why am I doing this, I'm only doing this because you're making me go to Mass, that when they see kids their own age have that more of a spiritual, then they might have that attraction instead of just saying, oh God, you're making me go to Mass every Sunday like I have since I was a kid. Right. You know, and I'm going to skip real quick to another point. The Renewing the Vision is a document from the, um, from the bishops. And one of the things they're really talking about is this idea of integration, uh, of bringing all the ministries together. And when I read about what youth ministers are struggling with nationally, they're a little frustrated with sort of the romper room and pizza mentality, which is, okay, youth is to be in kind of a nailed down room and we give them pizza and they sort of run around. And it doesn't connect with what we know as liturgical life of the parish and the service life of the parish. And it's really its own spot, preferably as far away from the church as possible, right? And so the bishops are saying it has to be central so that their service does tie in with liturgy, so that their liturgy does tie in with meeting new people and welcoming people to the parish, so that it all has to fit together. So I encourage you that if you are able to get teenagers involved in your ministry, that you try to pair your ministry either with another ministry or with what's going on in the core of the parish. In other words, um, taking an opportunity for an athletic team to do a service project <coughs> and to work with some other team ties together for them how all of this, how all of this fits. In other words, um, this is the age where they learn as adults, becoming adults, how their life fits together. We know from our friends and colleagues that there are some people who can tie together their parish life, their family life, <coughs> the parish life being their faith life, their family life, their work life, and their civic life. It all fits together. And other people where it's compartmentalized. Right? Parish life is very different than their work life. Where they learn that, researchers tell us, is the teenage years, how those things fit together. So I would encourage you, every opportunity that you have in your ministries, to try to expose them to at least one other ministry and to show how this fits together. Okay? Let me give you three motivations, uh, and then I, and, and Dave, you can check me on time. I've got about, about 10 minutes. Okay. 
um, and I'll make sure that I leave some time for questions. Um, again, in a little bit different language, and, and I think that your teenagers here are going to be able to give you very good practical advice about how to apply this. But here's something I think very, very important. What motivates teenagers? And again, I'm going to give this in a little bit different terms, but here I think are the three things that really motivate. Um, the first thing is meaning. Uh, why are we doing this? Why is this important? Um, you know, in some of their answers they talked about, they want to know what a ministry does. Um, Mike, maybe that goes back to your question about ideals. Um, you can't jump into ideals right away. Just like at a dinner party, you can't right away talk about what you're passionate about when you first met somebody. You have to develop the relationship. But students very much do want to talk about their ideals, what they hope for. They're emerging from what we call this black and white world. Everything is either fair or unfair. And they start to learn about gray. And they start to learn about how things overlap. And that is where that passion can really grow into a sort of a healthy ideal, healthy passion. And so they want to know what your ministry does and why it affects people. So don't be afraid to tell teenagers, here's how many people we serve. Here's why it's important. Here's how long it's been around. Here is what other people have done with this. Tell them why it's important. Um, another way of saying this, and, and teenagers are famous for saying this in high school classrooms, which I always thought was the best question to ask, why do we need to know this? Why is this important? <laughs> it's not just why is it on the, if it's on the test. That's a, you know, one level of it. But they really do, by the time they're seniors in high school, they want to know why does this matter? Why does this matter to the rest of the world? How does this fit with my life going forward? So first, meaning. The second thing, and this is very strong, I think it's the strongest, is relationships. Again, if you think back to high school, and I ask you your three favorite memories, every single one of them is relational. Every single one involves some other person and that experience with them. But if I ask you about fourth grade, usually it's about place or teacher or what happened to you. And it's because your brain really changes. And so all of a sudden, they become acutely aware of their relationship to others, how others see them, how others treat them, how they treat others. And so one of the motivations, and they said it many, many times, have other teenagers there. It's not because they don't like adults. It's because they are seeking in every sort of experience that relational experience. This is why they will get together and do all sorts of do goofy things, but it doesn't matter what they're doing. Being together is really the point. Again, I don't think they're that much different than adults, but they tend to be much more tuned into that need for relationships. So I would always argue that if you're looking to bring teenagers in, pay attention to the relationship first. Pizza, everything else, doesn't matter. It will not really get them there and will not keep them there if you have not figured out a way to form relationships. And you can't form relationships. If somebody handed you a list, I, you know, Lisa maybe or, or Pat, you were asking the question about, can I get a list of 15 teenagers? And you're thinking right away, I can't cold call 15 teenagers. But I need one of them on my side to help make those relationships and help make those connections. And once I have those relationships, then I'll do it. But cold calling 15 teenagers, I'd rather ask people for money, right? I mean, that's, you know, yeah. Yeah. no, maybe not. Okay, yeah, about time for lowest on all of everything. So, so it's important to think about those relationships and cultivate. And if you have a teenager that comes in and they're not developing that relationship, then you better stop what you're doing and figure out. Don't give them something that they're going to mess up. Let me translate what she meant, what I think that she meant, not her personally, but teenagers in general. I think teenagers very much want autonomy. They want to do things that are new, things that they own, um, things that they can take ownership of. But what they don't want, which none of us really as adults want, is to come in with certain expectations that we have a very low chance of meeting, or at least there's no growth in it. And all of us have done this in volunteer capacities. We come in and say, okay, Joe did this last year, uh, and this is what Joe did. And I think, all right, well, hopefully my top mark can be as good as Joe did last year. That's not a real fun assignment, right? Because all I'm trying to do is not disappoint everybody around me. Teenagers understand that. And so if you are giving them simply something that either an adult has done or something that was just done before, there's not a lot of autonomy in it, but not a lot of excitement in it. I would encourage you to think about that motivation of autonomy being very important to them by giving them new assignments. Think about parts of your ministry that you haven't explored and giving them new assignments. And if they don't do it perfectly, it's perfectly fine that the mistakes don't cripple your ministry. But I do think that it's important for them to seek out that kind of autonomy and ownership because it doesn't do us any good to have people in ministries that we're constantly having to supervise. That's not very helpful. And we don't want people who just want to come in and just do everything that was done before. There's plenty of spots for worker bees, but we're looking at leadership. And I think Erica's point was really, really important. She wants leadership. I think teenagers really want those opportunities for leadership. And they can tell if we're faking it. Hey, take this really important assignment. You're going to put stickers on every one of these flyers. <laughs> really, really important. That works with my four-year-old, but it's not going to work with, with a teenager. 
Remember, they're much closer to the 40-year-old. They know busy work when they see it. Trust me, as a high school teacher, I know. They know busy work when they see it. And that's okay. That's good. We want them to know what busy work is because we want them to seek out work that is valuable, that is meaningful. Okay? So those three sort of ideas of how to motivate them in reverse order, right? Autonomy, relationships, and we want meaning. And so if you think about that, running through all the very specific ideas that you have, I think that you're going to keep them a little bit more motivated. I think that you're going to loop them in. <coughs> the last thing I'll leave you with, and I'll answer some questions too. Always, I think, in my view, always think about who. I think just like we do with adults, be thinking about these teenagers and what they're good at. Um, I was in a meeting today, we were talking about academics, and they were saying, oh, some of these kids won't you know, turn stuff in on time. I said, I bet it's about the exact same percentage of teachers who don't turn stuff in on time. <laughs> Guess what? They are the exact same percentages of adults that we have. Some of them don't get stuff done early. Some of them are super good list people. Some of them are really inspirational and bring a lot of energy. In just the same way, the adults that we know. I think it's perfectly fine to start looking at these teenagers, talking with them, and identifying, saying, hey, you're really good at getting stuff done. Hey, you're really good at bringing other people in. Hey, you're really good at being creative or asking that difficult question, right? It's okay to start evaluating teenagers that way. And then ask them to find more of those. Hey, I need 10 super energetic teenagers for this event because we need to get going for this event. We need to generate some excitement, whatever that may be. But think about them first rather than just the event or what you're bringing to it. Think about who first. And I think you'll be a little bit more successful.